I, I, what's great, you're fighting for all these people who are being wrongly subjected to X-rated birthday card ads about being balls deep. It's a valiant task. And uh, I'm sure your followers thank you. And I thank you too for the time, Jason, but I got to go back to spreading the gay agenda at my job. So thanks you for the, thank you for the time. I wanted to bring on Alex Reimer or Reimer. I'll ask for Alex to clarify his last name here in a second. He, he writes for a blog, I think, called Queerity, uh, Free of Agenda Except That Gay One. He's written a piece headline, Jason Whitlock is the latest anti-gay activist to allegedly get caught partaking in some very gay behavior online. Alex, uh, welcome to Fearless, and uh, clear up the pronunciation of your last name for me first. I appreciate Jason. Reamer is how you pronounce it. Reamer. So, Alex, I'll just start with the headline. Mm. Why do you label me as an anti-gay activist? I don't consider myself <clears throat> an anti-gay activist. What, what do you have to do to qualify to be called an anti-gay activist? Well, Jason, just a quick perusal through your Twitter feed. You talk a lot about the alphabet mafia and the uh, desecration of society and saying that sexualized behavior leads to a lot of that and talking about gay people and LGBTQ people's role in that. So I think if we look at your public statements and tweets, it's fair to surmise that you are an anti-gay activist or at the least an anti-gay voice. Why wouldn't I be considered, if you look at my Twitter feed, I talk a lot about a biblical Christian worldview. And yes. why wouldn't I be just called a Christian? And or, I mean, if you look at my Twitter, I probably tweet more about uh, my weight loss journey and struggle. And I know it, that probably doesn't connect with you in the same way because you don't have the same weight loss issues as me. But I probably I tweet more it. about gluttony and, and I talk about how gluttony is a sin and things like that, you don't have that problem, so it doesn't connect with you. But I guess when I reference Alphabet Mafia, it does connect with you more. And so I, I just don't see myself, and I don't think it's a fair uh, description of me as an anti-gay activist, you know, a pro-God, pro-Christianity activist. That would be fair. What's have you ever taken a pro gay viewpoint the last couple of years? What is have define you spoke, a pro I mean, gay your, viewpoint? Well, because Jason, you're adamantly opposed. You, you you always demonize gay sex and LGBTQ people and transgender issues as well. We know what side of the of the coin you are on those. That's why I said whoa, you whoa, are anti-gay, anti-LGBTQ. Hold for one second. Hold for one second. Hold for one. Show me. Show me where I've demonized. Uh, gay sex. Now, I do think it's a sin, but again, I write a lot of columns. I, I There's can't no believe difference between that, I've ever Jason, written a column that, it's a that talks about being, being where I get into details about pro or gay sex or anything. I mean, my columns pretty much have defined me throughout my 30-year career. There's just not a lot of content where I'm going into detail about how gay people have sex. Well, this whole crusade that you've been on the last few days uh, would seem to indicate that you are very uncomfortable with any mention of uh, sex on your browser feed, despite the fact that this ad that you tweeted about was you know, probably a targeted ad based on your search history. So that's what I'm here to talk about, this tweet you made a couple of days ago, Jason, that everyone else is talking about and just kind of the foolishness of it and how I think you, you kind of owned yourself, my man. I think you kind of owned yourself by showing this targeted ad that people who know the business know that it's usually a result of your search history or browsing history. So that's what I'm here to talk about. That's the primary topic of the piece that I wrote about you. Well, again, I just started out with your headline and your piece. And so it is my show. I understand you want to, what you want to talk about, but I invite you on the show to talk about the piece you wrote. I, yeah, I get everybody I on Twitter has been too. talking about my tweet but again, I'm just asking you questions about your piece and why you would describe me in that way to start off. And then the, uh, I just want to, do you consider yourself a journalist, a blogger, an activist? What, what, is, what is it that you're doing at Queerity? Well, I think at Queerity, we give a voice to LGBTQ folks and gay people who have lacked a voice in mainstream media for uh, 
since really the beginning of time. So that's what we do. We tell the gay viewpoint. And as our tagline says, we're without an agenda except the gay one. And we're so glad that you uh, found our site, Jason, and are promoting your work right now. It means a lot. And so my question was, do you consider yourself a journalist, an activist, or a blogger? I would say a mix between a journalist and a blogger and a personality. I used to be a radio host, just like you. I, I remember that you worked at WEEI. Is, isn't that... Were, yeah. were you with your, part of Jerry Callahan's show? Yes. Jerry's a good friend, yes. Yeah, and so I, I, that's where I remember... I think I've been on the show when you were on the show. Accurate? Probably, yes. Yeah. So as a journalist and you're part journalist, part activist, what, what's your journalistic uh, justification that a Timu ad that talks about balls deep, mm. that this is somehow targeted because I think in your piece, because I, clearly I must be looking at porn or gay porn or I've outed myself as gay, as a journalist, what's your justification for contending that? My justification for contending that is that if you you know how display advertisements work on a lot of these websites, right, Jason? They target you for your specific interests. How many times have you been talking to your friends about something and then all of a sudden that very product you're talking about appears on your Instagram feed? You know, and I logged on to ESPN's NFL standings the other day just to do a test. I saw an ad for the Cleveland Hotel in South Beach, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Why? Because I Google about warm weather destinations and I want to go away and I like Miami in particular. So it makes sense that I would see a targeted ad based on my interest. I don't believe and you know, I would say hundreds of thousands of people have told you this online that you would just randomly get a, a, an ad for a very X-rated birthday card just out of the blue. I know you've been tweeting about you know, the Alphabet Mafia is after you and ESPN and Disney are after you, but I don't think it's really that Machiavellian. Alex, These as a journalist, I, I hear that. We've, we've heard a lot of that. Are, it's that ads that are targeted I, towards I got your it. Interest, I got so, it. We've yeah. heard that all over exactly. Twitter, but I, I just want to know, right. as a journalist, do you think that me tweeting out one Timu ad is an indication of the ads that I see on a regular basis when I visit ESPN and other websites all day, because I'm on the web all day, you think I don't primarily or all the time get hotel ads or weight loss ads or a bunch of, the only thing I ever get and ever got was this one Timu ad? Well, the Balls Deep birthday card, I think, is different than the Timu ad that you've been talking about. There's no, been no, two. That's the same but, company. Yeah, but different different products. And the card Jason, no, is from Timu, think, but Jason, do you think that's think that the only time, ad I ever get I or ever have that, gotten? You, I don't think that, but you did receive it. And it's scary to think, but these algorithm, algorithms don't make a lot of mistakes. So... Why did you get that ad? That would be the question. To my knowledge, and granted, I'm not paying attention to every banner ad I've ever received. Uh, I'm not getting dirty X-rated birthday cards about being balls deep into somebody, even though, you know, that might be more fair in my interest than yours. I don't know. But why? that's that's, that's just the question that but, we're asking. Uh, okay, why Alex, tell this me this, appear? because I don't know. But Alex, I'll say this. Because I have a heterosexual view of the world, when I hear balls deep, I think of heterosexual sex. And so I've watched everybody on the internet connect balls deep to homosexual sex. And I'm like, oh, I, I didn't know that. And so then I went to, I literally today, I went to Google and punched in balls deep to see what would come up to like, because this is something I didn't know. I interpret the world through a heterosexual lens. I don't hear balls deep and think gay sex. You do. So still, I get why you're gay. And so right. I, when I look up the balls deep meaning, I see, I see all kinds of definitions. Deep sexual penetration, which the balls are almost into, can be used as an expression for something overwhelming, exaggerated. Uh, I, I saw what most of it, extremely to the fullest extent. Uh, I, I see most of this stuff. Balls deep is a sexual expression. It means penetration to your balls. See, Jason, hit the you're wall, searching balls. Your penis inside her Virginia, vagina with your driving deep inside. 
So again, when I saw the ad because of the way I'm wired, I'm like, why are they putting this promiscuous heterosexual lust on ESPN? It's well, the Jason, exact I got, same I, complaint I, I had I gotta tell when I saw a woman in a, in a T-shirt that says, I lick, swallow, and suck, and I complain about that. I got to tell you, though, Jason, by searching more information about Balls Deep, I think you're only going to get more of these kinds of ads. So it's like a self-defeating prophecy. <laughs> so you don't, I, I don't care? Then why, care. Did, then why did you tweet about it and are making now, and congratulations Because to I you, do care about that. And I'm trying, to, okay. I'm trying to find out why it's happening. If it happens with kids, I'm very well, very much aware that when I go looking into Deshaun Watson or T.D. Jakes or any of these stuff that I talk about on my show, when I go deep into the raunchiness to figure out what I'm going to talk about on this show, I'm aware that I'm exposing myself to perhaps other raunchy stuff. But yeah. I, I'm just well, telling I would you, say you well, then maybe when you I saw the question, words balls are, deep, yeah. I interpreted right. it from a heterosexual point of view, and I find out when I go like, because I'm like, why is everybody else seeing this as gay? And then I go to the internet and it backs me up. I'm just like, oh, well, they're wired so, to see things one so, way. You, I'm wired to see are, things another way. But despite your uh, Christian life, you are very familiar with going balls deep into somebody. Is that what we're getting out of this? <laughs> oh, 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 Alex. oh, God, you're a comedian. You're, oh, that is, I am. Oh, so funny. Oh, that is oh, oh, I just can't stop laughing. That's so funny. Thank you, Jason. You said, are we going to have a real discussion? Because you, you're an activist, a blogger, a comedian, and a journalist. I never said activist. I never said activist. But I, I would sign on to comedian. But I only have a couple minutes left, Jason. I do have a day job that I got to I gotta get back to spreading the gay agenda. So, so uh, there's a couple more minutes Let me just here. get more to a few little factual things in here that are just like, you're a journalist. You say that in 2012... I got fired or blown out at Fox Sports over my Jeremy Lin tweet. Who, who, who told you that? Well, you did make that tweet about Jeremy Lin, right? And you left Fox Sports shortly thereafter. That's not true. Well, you had a second stint with Fox Sports. No, no, no. I didn't leave shortly thereafter the Jeremy Lin tweet. I left in 2013. Well, you, what, and Fox Sports Jeremy was, was two, very Jeremy upset. Jeremy was 2012. I mean, so it's, I got know, it. And Fox Sports was yeah. very upset when I left. I didn't get blown out. They were upset and mad and thought I double dealed with them and didn't tell them I was negotiating with ESPN. Like Jason, I was just you wrote in I was here just that I got blown. I was just I was just hyperlinking to what is no, 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 no. This isn't a hyperlink. Widely. This is you a statement it, of fact. Jason, I'm not here to debate minutia about your career. I think. <laughs> I'm here to talk about, as I said, the article, the blog. I, I know, get the that the facts don't matter stuff. to yeah. you, but you're saying that I got fired at AOL Sports. I, that's not true. My did contract you not, ran out, leave and I took a better contract okay. from uh, Fox Sports. Jason, you've had a long career, a respected career. I used to love watching you on ESPN growing up. I'm just going off of what's been reported elsewhere, reading articles about you for years. I mean, that, I got that's, fired that's, that's at why I Fox that Sports in 2012. You saw that reported elsewhere. That I, I got never, fired I said, at AOL shortly, Sports. I said, I said you left, blown out. No, you said I got blown say, out. Shortly thereafter, Jason, 2013 is not that long after winter of 2012, which is when the Jeremy Lin tweet was made, correct? So, I mean, Let me, I think we're just I quibbling over up. semantics here. No, I, I think if you say that someone got blown out, let me find. While always difficult well, to Jason, manage, if you want to, if you want to talk about journalistic case after integrity. leaving the star at ESPN, he worked briefly for AOL Sports and Fox Sports, blowing himself out of each opportunity. These people were trying to sign me to new contracts, and I took well, better I, well, contracts okay. elsewhere. Well, in the future, Jason, if I were to write about your career, I will make sure to give you a call. I have your producer's number now, and you can tell me exactly how those conversations went. I was not privy to those conversations, and as I said, I, I know, was just but you're a journalist. Repeating. You don't have to write things you don't know about. You follow me on Twitter. You're familiar with me from your WEEI days. You could have asked questions beforehand. You, you, you're making the assumption, like, part of your argument is like, 
Whitlock got one Timu ad, and that speaks for all the ads he gets anytime he logs on the internet. You're still, you're still and, getting them. You're still getting them, Jason. You're still getting them. So I'm still, I appreciate. The I know I'm still getting Timu here, ads. I just saw the lick, swallow, and suck one. And again, I don't know. There's millions of other people being subjected to this, and I get that you're pretending well, like and it's it great only that you happened are to Whitlock. For I, it's great you're fighting for all these people who are being wrongly subjected to X-rated birthday card ad about being balls deep. It's a valiant task, and uh, I'm sure your followers thank you. And I thank you, too, for the time, Jason, but i got to go back to spreading the gay agenda at my job. So thanks you for the, thank you for the time. Good luck, Alex. Thank you. Thank you for making the time. I, I'm going to... And he's right. I'm about to demonize... Uh, the Alphabet Mafia, so, or, or at least him. It's just like, they have an agenda, and they lie to accomplish their agenda. Deception is a huge part of their agenda. And lying. And it... It, it is, and if that makes me an anti-gay activist for saying like they got an agenda and I get they don't like me because again, it ain't because I'm an anti-gay activist, it's because I'm a pro-Christian activist. 